Greetings, Deep Dive Podcast listeners. This is your boy, Sam Orem, coming at you with another episode of the Deep Dive Podcast. Guys, we've had an incredible season two thus far. I know I say this every week, but I'm really excited about where we are. We've had some incredible guests. We've had some incredible topics. I've been able to just share some messages with you from the heart, just from a solo perspective. Um, over the next few weeks, we have some super guests that's going to be, you know, joining us on the podcast as well. So we thank you very, very much for supporting the podcast. As I say every week, our numbers are really through the roof, which excites me. Uh, we're we're originating in 172 countries right now, so we have people who are who are tuning in every single week. They're learning. They're being empowered by the message of the Deep Dive Podcast. So I don't take that for granted, and I really thank all of you for your support. Um, if I can continue to impose upon you to support the podcast from a standpoint of liking, sharing, you know, downloading, subscribing, whatever you can do to support the podcast, I certainly would appreciate it because what it does, it allows us to continue to expand our platform. You know, we want to make sure that we become multilingual. We want to make sure that we expand even beyond the 172 uh, countries that we're in right now. So all of your support goes a long way in terms of helping us get that done. And with all of the incredible guests that we've had so far this season, um, we have another incredible guest tonight. This is a young lady that I have so much respect for. Um, I've known her for quite some time and we always have conversations about business, about vision, about life life. She is a wealth of knowledge. She has so much information and knowledge that I certainly wanted, wanted to bring her uh, onto the Deep Dive podcast so that she can share some of her wisdom, some of her knowledge with you. And uh, she agreed to do that. So we're excited to have her. We're going to talk a little bit tonight about understanding the Muslim faith. One of the reasons that I wanted to do this particular podcast is because it's for my own purposes. You know, I've always wanted to know some of the nuances and some of the questions that are out there about the Muslim faith, but whether it's just hesitancy and asking or whether not knowing the right questions to ask, you know, I've never really gotten into it the way I wanted to just to really have a good understanding. But because of the relationship that I have with this young lady, uh, she makes it so easy for me to be able to, to ask questions in this public setting. We're going to do actually a series of podcasts that will um, answer the questions about the Muslim faith and give us all a better understanding of what it is. Uh, so tonight's episode is basically an introduction to that. We won't be very long because we certainly want to keep um, our uh, questions for part two uh, with our panel. We're going to have a panel that we're looking forward to uh, sharing with you about the understanding of the Muslim faith. But tonight you will get a great understanding of where we are from an incredible guest, an incredible person. I want to introduce all of you in the Deep Dive Podcast family to none other than Miss Aisha Akbar. Aisha, how you doing? <laughs> I'm outstanding. How are you, Miss? I am outstanding as well. I certainly appreciate you uh, agreeing to be a part of the podcast. I know that uh, you're super busy in, in your own right. You're doing so many things. Before we even talk about, you know, the uh, understanding of the Muslim faith, just kind of share with us a little bit some of the things that you're doing. I know you're always busy empowering people, working with kids and stuff. So what, what's going on in the world of Asia Akbar? Wow. Well, on a business side, I'm doing a lot. Um, I, you know, I have a homeschool program. Um, I mm -hmm. homeschool. I'm about four children. Okay. And um, I'm also um, in marketing. Okay. Um, I own a, 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 um, I'm in part of One Voice Worldwide. Okay, right. We, we all know and love One Voice Radio. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. It's a shameless I'm plug. So <laughs> <laughs> I have an online mall, shopping mall, you know, the hot shop mall. So. Mm -hmm. Check me out. I'll send my link. Um, also, I've been asked to sit on a couple of boards. I've been asked to sit on a board of an organization called Fabulous on Purpose. And it is a women's organization that's helping um, women, single mothers, to become their best self and, you know, to become self-sufficient and independent and be able to take care of themselves and their children. Okay. And um, it was a it was an 
ideal that's kind of close to something I was already doing, which was empowering individuals as a whole to find their life purpose. Um, so when someone brought the idea to me, I could not deny sitting on the board. Um, right. a, a one of my daycare parents came to me and just was like, I really respect what you do for me and my children and how much you, you know, help me, you know, and, and I was always, you know, there with her. And so she was just saying that the organization she was working for was looking for board members and she would like to put me on the board. So that's how I got that opportunity. Um, also, uh, we're starting, a, I just started an LLC with a group and we're doing an agriculture project. So okay. that is extremely exciting to me. Because that, that's, that's... Um, mm-hmm. No, no, go ahead. I was about to say that's exciting, but go ahead. <laughs> it's a lot, but it's everything I've asked for over the last, like, four to five years. It's like I have been putting some things in the atmosphere about what I wanted, asking Allah, you know, to bless me, to, um, you know, to be a servant, you know, to, to, to serve my purpose and to do what I was put on this earth to do. Right. And so, you know, in studying my name and, you know, we're, we're big on our names and name meanings and, and knowing that I had, you know, a big job to do in this world. And mm-hmm. I was like, wow, you know, I was just trying to live up to what I was supposed to be doing in my life first. Oh, and okay. it's been coming to me. It's actually been coming to me. So I'm just like, now that's good. I mean, that's a, a, a testament to, first of all, hard work and dedication But also, we talk about this a lot on the Deep Dive podcast, creating your future, claim it, you know, name it, claim it, go after it, do the things that you need to do uh, from a physical standpoint that could actually help you get to your dreams and your purpose. So that's incredible. And I see that you're doing a lot to empower women, which is great, you know, empower kids, which is great. You know, so you are to be uh, commended. You ought to be applauded in terms of what it is that you're doing. And again, and this is, you know, just to be transparent with everyone, I've known Aisha for a very long time. Uh, We're very good friends. She's a part of my company, as she mentioned. Uh, But all of that aside, this is a brilliant businesswoman. You know, this is a brilliant uh, person of vision. She has all the tools that we look for when we're talking to people from the Deep Dive podcast perspective. Uh, She has uh, all of the tools that help people empower themselves and really paint a picture for the future, which is one of the reasons I was so excited to get her uh, on the podcast just for a few minutes to talk about a couple of things. And one of the things that's uh, front and center in terms of her life, as she mentioned, is her faith. She is solid in her faith. Uh, She has really blazed a path, not just for herself, but for so many other people. And that path has been blazed on and and the foundation has been set based on her faith which is which is wonderful Uh, but one of the things that i wanted to know as i mentioned and so many people wanted to know um, is just a little bit about the muslim faith you know and the topic again is understanding the muslim faith because there's so many misconceptions out there you know this there's so many misconceptions out there but let's not get it twisted everybody there are misconceptions out there about every faith, every religion, every race, every everything, right? So we we all have these misconceptions or preconceived notions about certain things. That's just out there, period. But I wanted to be able to, to really just hear from someone that has lived the life, has walked the walk, talked the talk, and done the things that needed to be done to respect and honor the Muslim faith. So Aisha, let me ask you just first of all, how did you actually... Um, I don't want to say get involved, but, you know, were you uh, always a part of the Muslim faith or was it a a life activity that gave you that aha moment? How did it all begin for you? Actually, I was born a Muslim. Okay. My mother um, has been a Muslim. Um, She joined the nation when she was 19. So I've been a Muslim all my life. Okay. Um, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. How, how has that journey been for you in terms of, you know, um, and, and I, don't, I don't mean it from a standpoint of, because everybody hopefully is a part of some type of uh, religious foundation, but, you know, how have some of the experiences of um, the Muslim faith, how have that changed your life or, or, you know, in certain ways? I know for me, even from the outside looking in, I love the discipline, you know, of the Muslim faith and a, a lot of the things that they do or either don't do that I really respect because it goes right to the uh, core of being disciplined. How has that, how has the faith, you know, uh, impacted your life from that standpoint? 
absolutely. Well, um, it's really it's discipline is the key word. Um, I was I was born and raised a Muslim. Um, I had two extremely good examples coming through. Um, my mom was a true follower. You know, I'm a follower of Elijah Muhammad, which is a little different from um, Orthodox Islam or Sunni Islam. Um, it's, so that is my foundation. And okay. um, my mom is definitely a key example of that. So, you know, to have an example set to you and then my mother's best friend, um, Sister Bula, you know, I had individuals who were like, extremely um think that a muslim is um, i can give you a little bit of overview of what what a muslim is um, okay. just so we can get started into my story but um so the islam is um meaning the submission to the will of allah okay. um, and it means peace and a muslim is a follower of islam so those are two things you may want to know. Um, the Muslim greeting is, you if you want to greet a Muslim, so like, for example, you could say like, instead of saying hello, you would say, assalamu alaikum, mm -hmm. which means um, I come in peace. Mm, okay. And the return of that greeting is walaikum salam, which is just returning the greeting of peace. Right. So, okay. Um, you know, we are a very peaceful group of people. That's one way. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm a little fiery because I'm from up north. <laughs> but um, <laughs> foundation is a peaceful foundation. You know, Islam is a peaceful religion. Right. Um, yes. Um, some of the beliefs of Islam and that we can all come together. I told you I'm a follower of Elijah Muhammad, but most all Muslims live off the same principles, um, which are to believe in Allah and his apostles, mm -hmm. to believe in the divine revelations and the hereafter. Okay. Uh, to pray, pray at least five times a day or to, you know, keep up prayer. Right. Um, to give into charity um, and fasting, um, especially during the Holy Month of Ramadan. Right. So those are some principles that, you know, will unite all Muslims. Mm. Um, but like I said, I was born as a, a follower of Elijah Muhammad. And one thing I loved about his program was that um, the fact that he came and gave a message directly to the black man in America. Mm -hmm. um, he came to teach them that the savior that they had been looking for had arrived. And they came in the person of Master Farah Muhammad. Um, okay. So he came to teach us that you know, that the, the everybody looks in the Bible and the Holy Quran and they look in the books and they look at these as like individuals that's like spook or spirit. Mm -hmm. But he brought it to you in real life form. He told you that God was a man, that the God and the, the devil were, were men, you know, and they're, and they're, you know, God is one who does righteous and, mm -hmm. a, and the devil is one who does unrighteous, right? Right. So that was part of his teaching. Okay, so he brought it into real life form, and he also put in a system in place that taught. And now this right here is what my foundation is so strong on because he taught the women how to be women mm -hmm. and the men how to be men. Okay, and he did that through a class called um, the MGT and the GCC class, was the women's class, and the um, FOI. Uh, or the feud of this mom was the was the the class for the men. Okay. Okay. So it was a class brought to the black man in America because you know we are we were slaves. We were taken away from our country mm -hmm. and our people. So we don't know what our true religion is. Mm -hmm. We don't know. Um, we can't claim just because we have a name that name came from the slave master. Mm. So. He came to teach us that we have our own um, heritage. We have our own name. Mm -hmm. You don't have to use, you know, other people's names. So he gave us a lot of wisdom. He gave us a lot of knowledge. And that that allowed me to become a strong, strong individual in terms of knowing who I am. Right. 
knowing whose I am and allowing me to navigate through life, understanding, you know, just how to operate. Cause we're taught we're peaceful people. Mm -hmm. We're taught to respect anybody who respects you. Um, we just know, you know, what we're dealing with and we are trying to create a name for ourselves. So in the MVP class, we were taught, you know, it was a Muslim girls training and just general civilization class. Okay. Um, it was led by, um, our minister at the temple that I grew up in. I started going to the temple around, we had moved from several cities and when we went to Cleveland, um, we had met a minister by the name of Mr. Um, Tari Kamza, which was a minister under the messenger, Elijah Muhammad. And his wife was Sister Captain, was the captain. Her name was Sister Bayana Sharif. And she, she taught the sisters class and she was actually a national cap captain for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Oh, wow. Uh, and that's, that's, she, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. No, I was just about to say, you know, that that's deep from a standpoint of um, I, I like I, I said again, I, I like the discipline, you know, I like the discipline. There's there's wisdom in discipline. And one of the things I, I had an opportunity many years ago to read the book, you know, Message to a Black Man in America. And and I've said this before on numerous platforms, but one of the things that always stood out to me was the message that where he talked about economics, where he talked about independence, you know, uh, ownership, uh, uh, self um, worth, these type things, which are all notions of discipline. But then when you, regardless of your religious belief, you know, if you practice these levels of discipline, you can succeed in whatever it is that you're doing. And for me, that was one of the takeaways from the book. It wasn't so much talking about uh, the faith, it was talking about what we should be doing, you know, what we should be doing as a race. And um, I've always, you know, talked about that. I've always practiced some of those principles. I try to discipline myself as much as possible, you know, in life, in business. I'm still growing um, uh, in faith. But these are some of the things that I truly respect about um, the Muslim faith and even understanding that. And one of the things that I did not understand, and I said, I was going to ask you is, you know, just what are some of the, the biggest differences between, you know, the nation of Islam and then just the Orthodox, uh, um, Islam faith or Muslim faith where, you know, we understand that there's differences everywhere, but just for people who may not know at all, kind of like me, you know, what are some of those biggest differences so that when we're, um, you know, addressing people, we'll know what it is that we're talking about, or at the very least, we can understand that, that this is the difference between this and that. Yeah, If you understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. Um, well, from my understanding, and, you know, I'm not, I'm not let me just put a little caveat out there. I'm not an Islamic scholar, no. I'm, but I... <laughs> I can answer your whatever questions you have to the best of my ability. But well, no, let, let me let me say this too. I didn't. I didn't want to interrupt you because we're both in a similar situation, and this is how the deep dive podcast work. This is our opinions in a lot of right. cases, or yeah. it's through our own personal experiences. I tell people all the time, like what I'm sharing with you on this podcast is just what I know, you know. <laughs> and two things can't be. There are two things that can never be disputed. That is a fact. And that is someone's opinion. Those two things cannot be disputed. So we listen from that standpoint. So from you and I, and, and I know, okay. you know, you're being um, uh, respectful, you know, of the listeners. But at the end of the day, you're sharing your experience. It is what it is. And who the, the people um, who understand, they understand. And the people who are open to listening and learning like myself, then that's what the message is for. So, you know, certainly be yourself, share what it is that, you know, you have from your own personal experience and we'll take it from there. Okay. Um, and we're going to save a little bit for part two, of course. So, but... Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. So don't, so, so don't go too deep. Just give us a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Islam is taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. The best way I can word it is it predates the Bible. So okay. it's telling you an original history that pretty much 
nobody really knew because, you know, God basically used to was is a is a black he tells you the the color of God because we know that black comes from white. I mean that white comes from black, not black comes from white. Most people know that, right? Mm-hmm. That the original people are a black people, right? And that you can create different colors from black, but you can't create different colors from white. So you know that there there's a history that predates the Bible. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's program gives you a predated history that be, that that is even before the Bible, okay? Whereas um, Orthodox Islam is a religion that was taught, I mean, was that after the Bible. It was taught, it was a brought to clarify the Bible. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, the Holy Quran is the book that we all read and all the scriptures we believe in. We believe in all the scriptures. We believe in the scriptures, but we believe that the Bible has been semi um, tampered with. Okay. And we kind of know that. I don't know if anybody knows that, but you know, you can take books have been taken out of the Bible. Um, it's certain portions of the book have been taken. And of course, you know, in slavery, the Bible was used to kind of, you know, encourage us to be, Slaves, pretty much. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, what the whole what what Muhammad of fourteen hundred years ago came to do was he got a revelation from God. So this is the who the um, Orthodox Islam believe. Now, I'm not an Islamic scholar, but you know, I'm no, just no, no, you that's why yeah, I no, that's fine. Yeah, that that's perfectly fine. You know, we okay, we're so yeah, we're Muhammad, not. Mm-hmm, I'm sorry, go ahead. Was 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 sent to the Jews. I mean, I mean to the Arab. Um, he was a prophet sent to the Arabs, okay, and he was also sent to clarify some things in the Bible that was questionable, okay, mm-hmm. or some things that may not be accurate in the bib- how the bib- Bible is written, because in mm-hmm. the beginning of the Bible it states that it's this is a you know it's been kind of translated. Okay. So in the translation, you know, they wanted to clarify some things that was some scriptures in the Bible that they wanted to clarify. So that's what Muhammad did. Muhammad was revealed the Holy Quran, and the Holy Quran was a was to clear up some things in the Bible that's questionable. Okay. 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 No, that's cool. But the Honorable yeah. Elijah Muhammad brought a program that was designed to wake up the black man in America and give everybody the entire history that was kept secret, which is why most people don't really even understand that um, God is a man. So Orthodox Islam is still more so, is a little, it, they don't believe that God is a man. And I got you. I got you. Okay. All right. Well, you know, again, I that, I learned something <laughs> just from a different perspective. You know, again, I'm I'm just trying to broaden my perspective. I know one thing that I've always asked, and you know, this this may show how shallow I am, but okay, it is it is what it is. But um, you know, I've always wondered, like, what was the the, the big split between you know Malcolm X and the Honorable uh, Elijah Muhammad? What was that? Um, big split about because I know we got a lot we always hear representation from Malcolm or about Malcolm X but what was that all about or is it just a, that's the short you know cliff note version cliff note version because we're definitely yeah. saving Malcolm around yeah 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 um, cliff note version <laughs> um from my understanding um Malcolm X had made some statements and um that daughter Black Muhammad had state, stated please do not go on, you know, on the media. I think it was talking about one of the presidents or something that was political. It was a political statement that right. he wanted to stay out of because that, he, like you said, the Honorable Black Muhammad was on a mission. Mm-hmm. He was on a mission to to build a black nation with inside of a nation. Okay. Right. He, he, he was not trying to rabble rouse. He was not trying to do anything but show the black man that he needed to create his own table. He, he needed to, to create a mission for himself. Do mm-hmm. not get caught up in the politics and what's going on in the world because that's not nothing to do with us. A lot of this stuff has nothing to do with us. 
Right. The only thing he was trying to do was civilize the black man in America and teach him who he was and what he could do if he really unite, he could do some powerful things. If we just get our funds together and get ourselves together. That's what Arnold Black Muhammad was trying to do. And, you know, Malcolm just being a leader in the organization, you know, was just going a little radical. Okay. He was going a little bit radical, and Arnold Elijah Muhammad was trying to, I guess, trying to pull him back a little. So that's my understanding. So he got sat down from his position. And as a result, um, you know, he started taking a group of followers. And I will leave someone else to speak on that. Yeah. Because I feel like they could do it more justice. Yeah, but no, that's he, fine. I, I, yeah, well, I, I just kind of wanted to get the, you know, the gist of it because you know there's so much stuff out there and, and like i said i've i've tried to talk to different people before but it's difficult sometimes you know um because the, the world is so tribal you know just being honest with you everybody is just so tribal everybody is you know locked into their politics or their religion or their race or their gender everybody's just kind of locked in where sometimes i just feel like you know, everybody, the entire globe just need to take one big deep breath. <laughs> it's okay to listen to different viewpoints. It's okay to, to listen to different views, whether it's political views. It's okay to listen to an opposing political view. It doesn't mean you agree with it, but if you're going to advance, you at least should listen to it. Uh, same thing with religious uh, religion, same thing with, you know, race things of that nature, uh, race relationships would be so much better even if both sides or multiple sides would just listen to each other. You don't necessarily have to agree on every topic, just be able to listen. And it's okay to agree to disagree. Hey, quite frankly, there have been people in my household over the years that we didn't agree on a topic, but that didn't mean, you know, we're going to stop loving our family member or our friend or whatever it may be. It's just like, okay, well, it's different for me personally. I'm not qualified to speak on anything about it. <laughs> so I just, I ask people cause I'm always trying to learn. I'm open to learning. One thing I'm, I can do, I'm good at is, you know, making decisions. And what I typically do is just, get all of my facts straight and I make decisions from there, whether it's political viewpoints or whatever it may be. So I, I certainly respect and honor what you're doing and what you're sharing. Uh, before we close out, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, part two of what we're doing. We wanted to use this particular podcast, this episode, Understanding the Muslim Faith, as an introductory uh, podcast to what may ultimately be a series of podcasts, certainly a part two, where we could um, get into a little bit more detail, um, you know, have some question and participation from uh, external sources so that we can kind of dig a little bit deeper. And I want everybody to understand that these conversations are just for people to get their own understandings and make their own decisions about whatever it is they're looking to do. It's all about education. It's all about empowerment. That's what we do on this podcast. And the more you listen, the more you learn, the more you learn, the more your mindset expands. And once that's done, you're growing. And that's ultimately what it is that uh, we're doing. So I thank you, Aisha, for sharing that bit of information before we get off the uh, podcast. Is there anything else that you would like to share from your standpoint or just in general um, as we look forward to part two? Well, definitely. Um, I just want to thank you for um, bringing awareness, um, bringing awareness to the fact that there needs to be a conversation because I've been in business and I've been um, a Muslim, like you said, all my life. And a lot of times I feel like um, you know, because I've always dived into being a Muslim all my life. I've always had to research other religions and figure out what they believe so that you can better know how to approach them and you can know how to relate to them, like you said, and know how to work together. Right. Because that's one of the things we have to know to do as people because we are better as a unit than we are as a, you know, tribal. Like you said, That's that right. was one of Arnold Black Muhammad's key messages is that we have to unite and do something for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's the message that's being lost and a lot of the negativity is what's being focused on. 
the fact that that we need to um learn how to eat to live mm -hmm. um that was another key message that he gave us and that's another portion on part two is the how to eat to live piece because with everything that's going on right now in the world if our people would have taken that information because applied knowledge to have knowledge is one thing but to apply knowledge is something mm -hmm. else that's so right. a lot of people had a book. It was a book that he wrote called How Do You to Live? And right. it was a book that really, really changed um, definitely my life, um, just in terms of I was dealing with some health pro problems. And I was like, Aisha, you have the key. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? You have, you've been given some wisdom. Um, you've been told how do you to live, but you have to practice that. You know, right. you have to put that into action. So. Right. I definitely would say that's another one of my missions is to one of our products that we have that we're marketing is Sarah. And it is a line of products that really help people to, um, to, um, be more healthy. And in particular, the black sea oil, mm -hmm. which, um, is a, if you understood right now that there is some items, you know, in Islam, it was the Navy bean. Um, it, it's, it's the turmeric. These mm -hmm. are some things that are healing. So your food can heal you. Right. And we're, we're looking into a whole lot of other things, but we're not taking it back to the basics. The wisdom, you know, that if our, if, if our, our foreparents will come back, we will, we are in a really bad space as a people. You know what mm. I'm saying? Yeah. Because our foreparents had a plan for us. God put together a plan where you can get, your your medicine off the trees. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And we're thinking that medicine is is something that's a drug. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So that is one thing that I'm passionate about is the eating habits that he put in place with the yeah. dietary program and also, like you said, the financial um the the financial discipline. He taught us the economic plan. Right. So those could be some, the, that is the up and coming episode that you could look into doing as well. There was okay. an economic plan that if the black people put in place right now would change their lives and will allow you to become on top because right. we're the number one consumers. That's and right. we're not being supported. If we start a business, we're not being supported. So we need to, to buy amongst each other. First. That's right. Right. We have to buy amongst each other first. We have to keep our money in our pocket. Like some of your teachings, you know, that I got from you is the 10, 10, 25, 55. Well, That's right. Yeah. Elijah Muhammad was real strict. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Elijah Muhammad was extremely strict. And if you were to get that down, right. you, know, you, you would be in a really good place. I'm telling you, we wouldn't have any financial problems. Right, right, As right. You know what I'm right. saying? So, yeah, no, I, I certainly understand. I, you know, I, I have a, I read part of How to Eat to Live, and um, I'm working on it. <laughs> That's that all I can say. For me too. That's a work in progress for everybody because, you know, I, I have a lot of work to do. I'm a vegetarian right now. And I, I'm proud of that, but I have a lot, you know, I still, man, you know, let me tell you, I'm a chicketarian. <laughs> I love me some chicken. <laughs> well, I just love food, but I, I do, you know what? I, I kind of say that tongue in cheek, but I do understand what you're saying, the value of it. Um, I've also just in all seriousness, I've, I've studied, um, how food and, and lifestyle can affect you physically and mentally and otherwise. And you mentioned, you know, the black seed oil product that, that we actually uh, produce. And um, it has been extremely well received, not just here in America, but around the world for people who understand the magnitude of, you know, consumption, food consumption. And, and like you said, people consume so many medications and things of that nature. And medicine wasn't designed for you to take, you know, you weren't supposed to, you're not supposed to be taking, you know, um, high blood pressure medicine your whole life. You know, you're not supposed to do that. It's if you had to take it is for corrective uh, purposes, but they always tell you, you know, you have to diet and exercise. You have to eat a certain way. You have to keep your physical exercise up and then you can uh, relinquish the medication unless there's some type of chemical 
Uh, and by the way, we're not giving medical advice here. I'm just kind of telling you, you know, some of the things that I, I learned and I am in agreement in terms of, you know, we have to watch our diet, the economics goes without saying, we have to have a solid spiritual foundation. So all the components are there. Here's what I want to do again. Thank you, uh, Aisha, so much for, you know, joining us on the Deep Dive podcast. We're really looking forward to part two, which will be a forum on uh, understanding the Muslim faith. And we may even turn it into a series because there, we could talk for weeks, you know, about this particular topic and still not cover everything. It is massive, but the foundation of what you said uh, has been properly laid, laid for everybody. And, you know, certainly for those of you who have any interest moving forward, we will um, certainly like for you to join us on the uh, upcoming forum on understanding the Muslim faith. Before we get out of here, Aisha, is there um, any way that if someone needed to contact you for a question or just say thank you or congratulations or anything, is there any way that um, anyone can contact you? Well, definitely. I'm, I'm on social media. I'm on Facebook and Instagram under my name, Aisha Akbar, but also just email. You can email me at A-A-K-B-A-R, the number one, voice at yahoo.com okay so that's a akbar a a k a r one at yahoo.com that's not it no it's a a k b a r the number one voice at yahoo.com oh one voice at uh, okay okay a akbar one voice at yahoo.com a Akbar one voice that is, and that's the numeric one. A Akbar one voice at yahoo.com. So if you have any questions or if you just wanted to give her an attaboy for a great conversation or anything like that, certainly reach out to her. We're going to continue to reach out to her. We're going to continue to, you know, share different um, viewpoints here on the Deep Dive podcast. Some are some are deep, some are light, but at the end of the day, we're trying to impact people all over the world. We're trying to just share our messages of empowerment, prosperity, entertainment all over the world. So once again, Aisha, thank you so much for joining us on the Deep Dive Podcast. We really appreciate your contribution. Um, for all of you who are listening in around the world, thank you so very much. We again appreciate all of your support. Don't forget to like, subscribe, download, and share this podcast. We're going to uh, let you know when part two of the series is going to take place. Also, if you're part of our Facebook group at the Deep Dive Podcast Facebook group, you'll get some information and some special insight as well, and we'll follow up accordingly. So thank you guys so very much. Make sure you go to the website at um, the Deep Dive Podcast live L I V E. If you have any comments, if you want to be a guest, whatever it may be, let's have some fun and let's impact the world. So with that, you have one more thing, Asia. Oh, yes. Um, February 26th is our holiday. It's called Savers Day. So I just wanted to wish all the individuals who's going to be celebrating Savers Day, which is this up and coming Saturday, a happy Savers Day. It's Master Prop Muhammad's birthday. So I definitely wanted to just say happy Savers Day to all the, the followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. All right. Happy Savers Day. Y two days from now. Happy Savers Day. So thank you guys so much. Thank you again, Asia, for that. Y'all have a wonderful night. God bless you. And we'll see you on the beaches of the world. <laughs>